All right. Uh, hello, everybody. It's Jonathan. Um, I wanted to make a quick video to introduce my FPGA-based Super Nintendo implementation. I've been working on this for quite a while. Um, yeah, <laughs> quite a while in the limited spare time that I have. Uh, I've made a ton of progress. Um, and I was just kind of, I kind of wanted to keep it under wraps until uh, I at least had some video output working. Uh, I took a different approach uh, than I did with my original NES FPGA implementation. In that implementation, I kind of started from, kind of started from the output and worked backwards. Um, and I mean kind of basically that I you know got some kind of video graphics output working and then you know added foundational features uh, as I went along with the Super Nintendo I took basically the opposite approach I implemented everything from the lowest foundational layer up and got that as absolutely perfect and accurate as I possibly could before I even bothered getting video output working. So with the Super Nintendo what I have done so far is I've got all of the audio processing unit uh, done. Um, so SMP, DSP, and I've actually got, let's see, so I've got the entire audio core finished. Uh, so all this down here, and that is, I finished that a number of years ago, actually, I think probably two years ago or something. Um, and that is as accurate probably as it will ever be. I've verified that against, I've verified my Verilog implementation against all 35,000 plus SPCs that are available on the um, on the SPC archive site and they match the output matches is a binary match for all of those SPCs when run against Blarg's SPC player in real time. I'm, I'm actually able to do a real time comparison and I just I kind of set up a script to just let it run. Um, it took a few days <laughs> to run through all the SPCs, but they are, uh, it, it's, it's basically exactly the same output as Blarg's SPC library, his software library. So that is complete. Um, the SCPU, the 816, that is completely done, 100% accurate as far as I can tell. Uh, I actually ran the 816 code through a formal verification tool. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with formal verification, but it actually can create a uh, literally a formal proof that a particular piece of logic is accurate and cannot fail given any number of inputs. Um, and you do that through by using system Verilog assertions. I think I have something like 3,200 last time I counted, or around there. 3,200 assertions. Um, every single one of them was written by hand. Um, you can look up system Verilog assertions if you don't know what those are. But they basically verify uh, every every single opcode in every single addressing mode for every single microcycle that it's doing the correct thing, that it's putting the right thing on the address bus, uh, the data bus, that all the internal registers are correct, etc, etc. It took a very long time, um, but that's one of the very first things that I got that I got working. So, uh, so that's completely done. Uh, the DMA is done, HDMA is done, um, and actually, so I've basically got the entire uh, Super Nintendo 
hooked up to a logic analyzer to my logic analyzer and I actually got a picture of that somewhere uh, let's see uh, here we go it's over here so that's the uh, the setup basically and uh, I upgraded my logic analyzer to do this um, I I think I can let's see I've got a I think I can capture 256 channels simultaneously now with my upgraded logic analyzer modules or blades that basically go into the into the mainframe and I can capture up to 64 million samples and that's at 250 megahertz uh, sample rate so these are just uh, this this these probe mods are actually from when I was developing the APU core for the SNES so um, I don't really need that much anymore except you can see a few here those are just for the for the APU uh, you know 21 40 41 42 43 register interface basically the the bus B interface to the APU that's the only thing I need anymore um, and see so these are just some close-up shots of the soldering uh, that was done so this is the graphics side back here back in the background over here is the APU that I don't use anymore um, and this is just putting some epoxy on afterwards and the the, the pink stuff that bubblegum looking stuff is just to prevent the epoxy from oozing in underneath the chips um, and or from leaking over you know on other parts of the board through the vias and basically making a mess and this is after the the SNES was the the probe mod was finished and yeah so that's what it looks like now actually <laughs> Actually, that's an old picture I've got. I think every single pin now is is hooked up. I'm looking at it from kind of uh, from over at my bench, and yeah, basically every single pin is now hooked up. So, um, yeah, so it's been super useful. Uh, I've actually a lot of it. I used I used a lot of it when I was developing the 816. Uh, the, the logic analyzer interface. I used a lot of it. Um, I used it a lot developing the DMA and HDMA. I've actually got something like, I think, uh, what am I up to now? Some like seven or eight test ROMs um, covering the 816, covering DMA, covering uh, HDMA, there's seven or eight, I've, I've created around 30 original test ROMs for the Super Nintendo and seven or eight of those actually um, they don't pass on on the latest version of Hegon um, and that's just because I mean they, they pass on mine and they pass on a real SNES and they don't pass on BSNES or Hegon and that's, I mean, that's not taking away anything from from um, BSS, BSNS or Egon, that's just I'm able to create those test ROMs because I have a full picture of every signal, um, what every signal is, signal is doing, every clock cycle, what all the clocks look like. Uh, they're really, I mean, they're things that you you, I mean, maybe you could figure it out through software, but I mean, there's some of them for sure. You could never, you, you'd never have a prayer of reverse engineering through software. You, I mean, you'd have to have a logic analyzer. So, as far as I am, uh, as far as I know, I'm the only person that's ever done anything like this. So, so I imagine that I'll end up getting more test ROMs that only my emulator and a real SNES can pass. Uh, but, or maybe not, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm 
working on the video output now. Everything else is basically done. So, um, so PPUs, uh, all the register interface, VRAM interface, um, let's see, you know, color generator RAM, sprite RAM, all that's that's all implemented. Literally, it's it's just <laughs> it's it's quote just the the graphics output <laughs> uh, I mean that's a lot of work still to do but um, but the the foundation is I mean it's it's done it's really only a matter of time now just got to implement the different background modes and priorities and uh, color math um, mode 7 I actually have a mode 7 demo I already figured out how mode 7 works I created a, an FPGA based mode 7 um, mode 7 uh, demonstration uh, that I can put a link to in the description if you want to take a look at that so I understand completely how mode 7 works how the affine transformations work um, so I'm not I'm not worried about mode 7 at all and so once that's done yeah I think I said color math um, you know there there's I mean there's there's a lot of video output related stuff that I have to do but I'm really confident that what I have now is I mean really close to as accurate as it's as it's gonna get um, I mean especially the APU core that's as far as I know that's my Verilog APU core is the most accurate SNES APU um, written for an FPGA that exists simply because I I verified it against every single SPC that uh, that's online um, on the SNES mu music archive. And what else? Let's see what else is in the, uh, in the CPU. Um, oh well, of course the the joypad interface, auto joypad reading, uh, refresh controller. That's all done. Um, the dynamic clocking. Uh, the way that the S-dash CPU dynamically changes its clock speed from cycle to cycle. That's all done, verified. Um, so really it's just... The cool thing is is that I, I don't have... Well, I have some video output now, which is why I'm making this video, but um, before I had any video at all, I still had the the APU core complete and accurate so it was really neat because I could load up games uh, to the to the Verisness and um, hear them playing I could hear the attractor demos playing uh, like you know load Super Mario World and it'll play or or um, uh, really any other game um, I'll show you a few of them but I think I can load. I can load something. I mean, seventy-five percent, probably more of the games that I load, they all run and play just fine. Uh, I, I mean, games like Mortal Kombat, for example. You know, I can, you know, just press start. You know, clicking through and uh, um, hear the character selections and you know, uh, and hear it saying, you know, fight. And, you know, I can, I mean, button mashing games, I can, uh, actually, Mortal Kombat is one where, um, I think it was Mortal Kombat, where I just mashed a bunch of buttons and actually won a round, which was really funny. <laughs> I had no video output at all, uh, but I was able to win, uh, win a match. So that was neat. So I am totally s just super excited about finally having video output and being able to have some you know see some visual progress um, so let's see what else uh, um, register file um, and PPUs and the CPU those are done I mean I'm just I have to add the registers for the graphics and the PPUs um, uh, vertical horizontal shifting all that stuff that still has to all be implemented but it's gonna be I mean it's really super fun it's gonna be really super fun at this point 
to add uh, new features uh, because I'll be able to each time I rebuild the design I'll be able to see bug fixes and and you know new background modes and more games working and so that'll be neat um, the let's see I've got I'm just kinda looking over my notes here things that I've done uh, I, I have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of gigs of logic analyzer traces uh, captures from I mean basically covering every part of the Super Nintendo and I'm there will definitely be more um, as I as I do the uh, as I go through the making the video output I've also made some really cool time-lapse videos of that I'm gonna post uh, of me implementing the I, I wish I had started making time lapses uh, when I when I first started working on the Super Nintendo way back in uh, in the APU days way back when when I was implementing the audio but I've got some really cool time lapse videos of me implementing the um, the DMA controller the the MDMA and the and the HDMA controllers uh, and I'll post those they're they're pretty neat to to watch. Um, Kind of learned a little a little bit about my my approach to programming. Um, watching the videos of me programming, it's uh, it's it, I notice that I'm extremely methodical uh, <laughs> in how I program and how I do research, and so it's just I mean it's just something fun to watch. It's not really to learn anything. It's just just interesting. I think that's probably all I wanted to talk about it before we got into the video. Oh, um, so this is written in pure Verilog. Well, actually, I mean, it's system Verilog, but uh, really that's that's just Verilog++ plus plus in my opinion. Um, uh, Verilog actually as a standard doesn't exist anymore. It was consumed by system Verilog standard. Uh, as long as you're using a reasonably reasonably recent FPGA. This is running on a Cyclone 4. Um, if, as long as you're targeting a reasonably recent FPGA, all the EDA tools support System Verilog now. So, I, all System Verilog does on top of Verilog is, is just add a few really nice useful um, keywords like like you can define a struct. I mean it's still all bits. It's, it, it's kind of a misnomer in my opinion because System Verilog is not another level of abstraction on top of the Verilog language. It's at the exact same level of abstraction as Verilog. It just adds some some kind of niceties in there. So, uh, for example, like if you have a if you have a pixel, you know, you can define a struct that has three members R, G, and B, you know, and, and define it as a type T, like a, a pixel type or whatever. So, really, just useful kind of neat stuff like that um, but yeah it's all Verilog uh, as far as I know this will be or well at least for the time being uh, this is the only uh, Verilog imp implementation of a fully function what will be a fully functional Super Nintendo um, at least for now I know there was some there is a video online of um, I think someone in Japan maybe uh, he implemented Super Nintendo on an FPGA however he did not write it in Verilog in fact he you can see he says that in comments it was written in some uh, I forget the name of the language some weird high-level is basically a high-level synthesis language um, basically kind of a I can't remember what the name of it was but anyways it wasn't written in Verilog so uh, it was basically translated from a higher level language uh, but I mean it worked I mean I'm not not taken away from what he did from what that person did I think is really cool uh, but this is all this is pure Verilog written by hand every single flip-flop and logic gate uh, was written by hand so it's taken a long time it's been it's been a lot of fun though so I've, I've learned a lot so anyway 
uh, let's get to the uh, the video now the video output I have I all I've just spent I spent only like less than a day on this so this is not uh, <laughs> this is not a final result I just decided to go ahead and implement mode zero and it is absolutely not complete it's maybe like I don't know if I were to guess a percentage like 40% complete uh, mode zero implementation maybe uh, <laughs> so it's it's totally buggy I mean it's it's a laugh but um, what we're gonna see but uh, yeah it's still interesting I like to capture progress of of the output of anything um, including like the, the audio even if it sound sounded like garbage I still recorded it so I could hear the progress so really I'm doing the same thing here um, just recording even though it looks like complete junk <laughs> it's still neat to to see my Super Nintendo actually outputting some tiles for once uh, for the first time ever so yeah so let's get started uh, let's see here so there's not really that many games that if I could find that would output anything that really looked like anything um, but I do want to show you the few that I do have so um, so again this is like a partial implementation of mode zero so I don't really I don't have a list of games that use mode zero so I was just trying things randomly although I do have a few test ROMs um, like uh, uh, Teples has some useful test ROMs here so this is his pad test test ROM and I've got this other weird bug so you see this uh, this rolling uh, <laughs> this rolling black bar uh that's it's just a bug i mean i i i whipped this together this minimal mode zero implementation and i didn't uh i didn't do any debug at all literally none so i don't know what that is there i have an idea of why that's happening but i didn't i didn't even bother to try and fix it before i made the videos because i was just i was so excited that my super nintendo is outputting tiles and it actually looks good so um so that's the uh that's his pad test or s pad test and uh let's do his low rom template here let's see. <clears throat> make your selection now so that's that uh, you can see there's no sprites or anything i don't have i don't have anything implemented with sprites this is literal literally my first foray into graphics uh into the graphics logic so um there was literally nothing but a black hole for the graphics there before so um it's still cool to see though uh it's also i noticed that in in another test realm is actually also i've got some kind of fence post or alignment error because it's missing one column on the left side so i'm sure there's about 137 bugs in in the incomplete logic that i have right now but uh still wanted to show it to you because it's cool and then another one is uh see equinox here that one actually looked interesting <laughs> Okay, so obviously total garbage, uh, but it, it runs just fine. Uh, just wait for the intro to go through here. I don't know if when I adjust the volume, if it uh, if it also increases the volume on the the Super Nintendo. <laughs> so there's some tiles. <laughs> I have pressed start, which pressing start does actually work, but 
See, there's the clouds. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it's cool. So, I love seeing something. You know, those are some, obviously those tiles are using mode zero. Um, yeah, this is the VRAM. The tiles being updated and all that crap you're seeing there. So, anyway. Well, that was that. Let's see what else we got here. Um, did those? Oh yeah, of course. Got to do the SNES test program. There we go. This one actually looks pretty darn good. Uh, let's see here. So electronics test uh, that fails. Pretty sure I haven't tried it, but I want to try it right now. Um, character test that. It's obviously messed up. Uh, controller test. It it works. Um, I can actually go through all the controller buttons that it's that it the sequence, and it will say that it passed. But uh, it doesn't highlight the buttons as you're pressing them. Um, so sound test works just fine. This is your right channel. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> This is your left channel. Left, 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 left. All right, and then oh, I'm I'm running out of uh, examples here. Uh, let's see, so I'll do uh, another one. So this is going to be Blarg's uh, CD, near CD quality demo. I have to admit, I do like how it says, <laughs> please run on SNES or BSNES other emulators play it with poor quality or silence it's a good feeling when my emulator is playing it perfectly so again that's just because my APU is so accurate um, so let's see what else oh yeah So the next one I want to run is, and the last one actually, is a Bad Apple demo. Um, it it shows the tiles. I mean, it's still got this bar, obviously. But there's something weird going on that I don't see how it could... I don't really have any idea how the Bad Apple works. Uh, if anybody has any ideas why this is behaving this way. But basically, it, it runs... But it runs really, really slow. It's like basically in slow motion, which is really bizarre. Um, it's certainly not anything. I mean, this is not a software emulator. This is a hardware-based emulator. So my clocks don't. <laughs> the system doesn't slow down under load. It's always running at a constant rate. So it's nothing like that. Um, really, really bizarre. I'll just load it up here. Um, uh, if anybody has any ideas why this is behaving this way, uh, please tell me because I'm I'm clueless. Uh, I mean, I have so much more to implement. I maybe it's something with the way the Bad Apple demo runs. Maybe it's something to do with maybe it uses sprite hits or something, which I absolutely don't have implemented. Um, I'm totally clueless. Uh, what could be causing it? Uh, I'm I'm hoping that it's just something that I haven't implemented yet some register or something like that which is totally possible uh, but let me load it up here where are you okay yeah 
Yeah, so... <laughs> I mean, it's outputting the tiles, but it's, it's just in slow motion. The video and audio are just really, really slow. I don't, I don't get that at all. <laughs> really weird, but it is still cool to... It's still cool to watch. Except for that stupid bar. Black bar. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. If anybody has any ideas, uh, I'm assuming, I'm going to assume assume the, the best and uh, say that it's just something, that I, some register bit that I haven't implemented yet that's causing it to run so slow like that. Um, but in any case, that's... Last one I wanted to show you, so go ahead and make sure there were no other Yeah, other games they just they don't show anything useful. Yeah. selection now. any case uh, I hope you guys found that interesting so I'm looking forward to uh, posting more update videos so all right I think that is it so I'll talk to you later bye